many people from the African and Caribbean community arrived in Britain, they were financially excluded. They could not get easy access to financial services. And our founder was one of those people. He came to this country in 1955. They asked him not to return because they didn't like black people. They did a study to find out how long the dollar stayed within the black community. And it was six hours. That's an example to show that our ability to actually keep wealth and money within our communities can be quite difficult without the presence of a black financial institution and that's an, also an example when people often tell us um, there's no money in the black community yes black tech day family we just had an empowering conversation about insurance i was just riffing and joking about how we don't look at insurance often enough but we look at our faith in a similar way we make jokes about last minute decisions to say jesus god please save me when we really should be more invested in being part of something whether it's your religion or your insurance you're supposed to be part of something and this conversation actually loops back to religion and faith and it connects to banking as well how you can make sure your finance is strong that you have a good base and you may be banking within your faith is something that you've never considered before but this is your opportunity to think about that this person is a pentecostal credit union representative he is the ceo they were set up in 1980 and their mission was to serve the black community and the faith community to give them financial freedom i was talking with him earlier and we looked at the windrush scandals and how black people have been treated since they've come from the caribbean and brought so much value to the culture what they have is a windrush success story helping people buy their homes start businesses and grow financially strong communities. He's going to give you a conversation about his work and hopefully you'll be inspired to be part of what he's doing. Please welcome the CEO, Shane Bowes. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, my name is Shane Bowes and I head up the team at the Pentecostal Credit Union, which is a community bank which serves the Pentecostal faith community and providing a variety of different financial services, such as loans, mortgages, savings accounts, etc., etc. I'm often asked, what is the difference between a bank and a credit union or community bank? And there are a lot of uh, similarities and a lot of differences. Now, the similarities are that credit unions such as ours are regulated in the same way as the major banks so we are regulated by the financial services by the financial conduct authority and the prudential regulatory authority who are the same regulatory authorities who oversee the work of the banks and all deposits in our credit union are insured up to the first 85,000 just as they are in a bank so if our institution was to go bust then all investors and savers would get all of them deposits up to the first 85,000 just as you would in a bank we also members of the financial services compensation scheme so if people have a dispute that they cannot resolve then they can go to the financial services ombudsman in order to resolve the dispute just as you can with a bank or building society so the service and the institution is just as safe as any retail bank and um, we offer the same sorts of services as a bank but there are also some pretty crucial differences between a community bank and a retail bank now one of the first major differences is that community banks such as ours serve particular sections of the community we're not open to the general public so you can walk out of here and open a retail bank account without necessarily having to show that you meet a particular criteria whereas in a common uh, a credit union or community bank you normally have to meet a particular criteria and that normally is around where you live or where you work so you can have Croydon Credit Union and in order to join the Croydon Credit Union you either have to live or work in the London borough of Croydon and that would make you eligible to bank with that community bank with us our common bond is one of faith so you have to have an association with a Pentecostal church and reside within Great Britain now that means you don't necessarily have to be a church goer you don't even all necessarily even have to be a Christian to open an account you just need to be able to demonstrate an association with a Pentecostal church so if you've been to a church for a, for a wedding or a funeral or a christening then you are eligible to open an account another very big difference between a community bank and a retail bank is that a community bank is owned by the people that you use the service. Now, with Barclays, HSB, NatWest, when you open an account and use their service, you're not an owner of that bank. You're simply a customer. You have no interest in the strategic direction of that bank. You don't share in the profit of that bank. You have no say in how that bank is run. Whereas with a community bank or credit union, once you open an account, you are a part owner of the bank. You are a shareholder in that bank. So you own it. So you have a, a say in how the
the institution is run and you get to share in the profits every year if that credit union or community bank has made a surplus. So those are some of the major differences between a retail bank and a, and a credit union or community bank. You know, it's a more ethical way of doing business. I'm also often asked why the need for a community bank or a black bank like Pentecostal Credit Union. After all, there are a lot of retail banks on the market and in the last 10 or 15 years, we've had a, a, an upsurge in the, the amount of challenger banks that are also in the marketplace now. So where is our, what's our niche? You know, why the need for a black bank? And the need really is one of history, really, because when many people from the African and Caribbean community arrived in Britain, they were financially excluded. They could not get easy access to financial services. And our founder was one of those people. He came to this country in 1955. He went to his local Anglican church. And after the service, they asked him not to return because they didn't like black people worshipping with him. So he left his local Anglican church and went to start or start worshipping at a local with a local group of people who were worshipping in someone's house. And many of these fledgling Pentecostal church groups were springing up in the late 1950s and early 1960s. But as these black church communities began to grow, they began to outgrow their origins. They were too big to now to be worshipping in people's homes and community centres. And so many of these church groups then began to approach mainstream banks for loans to buy churches, but they couldn't get access to the finance. Banks were not lending money to black churches and were lending even less money to black individuals to get mortgages and to start businesses. And so there was a specific need and requirement for a financial institution that was going to meet the needs of the black community. And so the credit union was formed in the home of Reverend Jones in 1980. And it soon grew from out of his front room into a local church. And from a local church, we were able to buy a premises from which we is now our home in 1988. There is also a need also for um, a financial institution right now that's also going to cater to our needs because we found in our um, history that banks have not been particularly sympathetic to black business owners. They have not been sympathetic to the needs of the black community in terms of when we are approaching loans to buy homes or to start businesses, we are treated in a less favourable way. We are less likely to get loans to start businesses, to get mortgages. And when we do get financial services, we tend to pay a higher premium or higher interest rate for those same services. The credit union has a more personalised approach because we are able to appreciate what the needs and requirements of our customers actually are. As I mentioned um, a little while ago, in terms of the experience of black churches in this country, many of them had difficulty finding um, or getting finances from banks. And being a credit union that has come out of the black church, we have been able to be more sympathetic and understand how the black church is actually run. We understand that black churches are very profit making, very uh, solvent institutions. And in the 43 years that we've actually been trading, we've managed to help 26 ministries buy their own properties. And many of those churches are very of the main major mainstream churches in the UK. So Ruak Ministries, one of the largest black Pentecostal churches on Brixton Hill there, got their mortgage from the Pentecostal church and many churches in the New Testament Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy, New Testament Assembly and Church of God in Christ. Some of the largest black Pentecostal church denominations have managed to buy their buildings through the Pentecostal church. And not only that, because those churches have then gone on to um, do a lot of essential work within the community in terms of meals on wheels, services in terms of other relief efforts to help people who are underprivileged and those churches wouldn't have been able to offer those services in their communities without having got a loan from the Pentecostal Credit Union in order to start their work and we are seeing central government now removing doing even less in our communities with young people and other vulnerable groups and so the role of the church in those communities in order to pick up a lot of the slack has happened so that's one of the ways in which we've been able to do that but there's also also a fundamental reason why a good reason why a black bank is so important. A study was done maybe I think about 10 years ago in America whereby they did a study to find out how long the dollar stayed within different communities in the USA and they, they took the Asian community and they found that a dollar stayed within the Asian community for 21 days. They then looked at the Jewish community and they found that a dollar stayed within the Jewish community for 14 days. They then did a study to find out how long a dollar stayed within the black community and it was six hours. That is an example to show that our ability to actually keep wealth and money within our communities can be quite difficult without the presence of a black financial institution. So just to give a brief illustration, when you open an account in the Pentecostal Credit Union or in a black bank, the savings or deposits you put in that bank, the funds are then lent 
out to other members in the black community to buy homes, to start businesses, to send their children to school. And so then they are then able then to create wealth within the community. When they make the loan repayments from that mortgage or that loan back to the Pentecostal Credit Union, we're then able to pay a dividend or return on the deposits of the black investors and savers. So you can see how the money within the community can be better harnessed and better used for our a mutual benefit and advantage by opening an account and saving within the institution. You might ask then, why should I open an account in the Pentecostal Credit Union? What can the credit union do for me? Well, that answer um, is multifaceted. For a start, when you open an account in a black bank such as ours, you are an owner of the institution. So you're not just a customer. You are more likely to be able to be accepted for a financial service or product from the credit union than you are in a bank or building society. But not only that, we have managed to create wealth for many people who were not in a position or very solvent position when they opened their accounts. So many people have come to the credit union not particularly credit worthy. Maybe they had a long history of debt or repaying credit commitments. Maybe they were on benefits. And what we've been able to do is start them off with a very small loan, for example, of maybe £500 and then encourage them to repay that loan by deducting money from their benefits or from their bank to repay that loan so that the loan is then repaid. It then boosts their credit score. They're then in, in a position to apply for a bigger loan. And so you can see that their credit position improves. And we've seen people who were in a position where they weren't working or weren't particularly credit worthy and they are now property owners because we were able to migrate them from a position of debt or poor credit to a position where they are now very credit worthy and they are now stakeholders in the communities in which they own. We are one of the largest credit unions in the United Kingdom. So we have a capital to assets ratio of 22% and a solvency ratio of 128%, which essentially means that for every pound in the credit union that is saved in the credit union at the moment, 28 pence of it actually belongs to the institution, which means if we were to close our doors for business today, it means every investor with a pound would leave with an additional 28 pence. And that's an, also an example when people often tell us um, there's no money in the black community. I often tell them that's false. There may be an issue about how we spend our money, about how we invest our money, but nobody can say that there isn't any money in our communities. There's plenty of money in our communities. How we harness it and use it for its best advantage is another matter. Thank you. My brother, you know your stuff is really, really powerful to sit in the audience and really enjoy the depth of that presentation. I was at that point where you said about, I can own part of a bank. So that, that's a really powerful statement. That leap from having an account with a big international bank to going local is where we're going to really have that conversation. We kind of associate size with stability. The big banks are okay, but we know they're not. We've seen some of them fall. So what do you offer in terms of a surety that the brand is strong and that if we invest in five, ten years time, it's still there and bigger than better than ever before. Well, I started off by saying that we founded in 1980. So we weren't started yesterday. We have a, a track record of success and stability by virtue of the fact that we've been trading for 43 years. But the other thing that I did, I mentioned at the beginning when I started talking was the fact that the credit union is regulated in the same way as a bank or building society. So we're not a partner. We're not someone where you're putting money here and then it's going over there and then someone disappears with the money and then the institution it becomes insolvent. Our books have to be uh, audited in the same way to the same level and standard as a bank and if the bank runs into trouble people's money is protected by the financial services compensation scheme we have to report to the regulators in the same way as a bank or building society but not only that our rate financial ratios are superior to those of most other credit unions in this country and rival that of a bank and i talked a bit, a bit about our solvency ratio our levels of liquidity and our capital to assets ratio we're a rich institution we got a lot of money as i said we've bought churches, we buy houses, we start help people start businesses. There should be no concerns as to the financial stability of the of the institution. And our books are available for public inspection. You can see them for yourself. Mm, that's powerful. As somebody who would consider themselves a stakeholder, if I invested my money and became part of your institution, how much of a decision maker can I be in terms of where you invest your money or where the bank goes in its decisions, especially in this kind of tech era we're in right now? Okay, so that's a really good question because there are some regulations about what the credit union can invest its money in. So I can't give it to you to go and hold it for me for another year and then come back and hope that you bring the money back. Any money that we invest our money, any institution we invest our money in, the investment has to be what we call a secure vehicle, whereby the principal cannot be lost. So we got several million pounds out on investment. So when we invest people's money, it means that the principal can't be lost. There is maybe some risk as to how much return or interest
interest or yield that investment's going to get, that, that's not protected because anything can happen in the market. But the actual principle of it is protected. So after three or four years of the investment, we know as an institution and our savers know that those investments will come back in at least the same form that they went out. Right. So I can't influence what you put it into, but you put in your code what you would yes, invest Yes. Yeah. So th that's what the law says. So in, in terms of where we actually put the money and invest it, yes. So we have an annual general meeting every year and we present the, the accounts and the board present where they want the strategic direction of the institution to go and the members then vote and give feedback on that. And if the members aren't happy with where it's going, they can sack the directors and bring in new people. You can't do that in NatWest. So if I put a little hundred pounds in, then I yeah. could attend that meeting and put my hand up. If you have one pound in there, because it's on a one member, one vote system, you see, so it's an ethical financial institution. You've got all our attention now. We've got literally just a minute just to quickly fire off a question from anyone in the audience. So, how, how, how do you open an account? Okay, so, the, so it's very easy to open an account. We have online banking, we've got a mobile app, so you can go to the website, simply click open an account, fill in your details, it will do an automated ID and V check in a few seconds time, and then once you've done that on the app or the website, you'll be invited to open the account with a minimum of £35. Now, there's a one-off entrance fee, admin fee of £10, and then your account is open with £25 in it, and then that's it. Then you can apply for a PIN number, put money in, take it out, pay your bills, and treat it in just the same way as you would with any regular bank. You as a member, as an individual, are a part owner of the institution the moment you put your first pound in the institution. I think we have a marketing campaign on our hands. I think that's what we needed to hear. Please, thank you so much for sharing the information. Brilliant question. Yeah. Let's get on that journey. At least investigate how you can get involved because this sounds like the future, man. Thank mm. you so much, Shane. Okay.